Hey everybody, today we've got something really special. Uh, this is gonna be our first guest instructor. And uh, when we were talking about doing this, there was one person that both my brother and I had in mind, and that is uh, Lawson McClure. Good friend of mine, we know each other for a long time. Long, long time. Uh, trained together for a long time, been being on each other for a long time. Yeah. Uh, I'm really excited to, uh, to have him on and show you guys a move because he's a long time competitor. Uh, he's been around the MMA scene for quite a while. He's an accomplished pro. He's a title holder. Mm -hmm. He was a champ. Uh, so uh, there's a lot to learn here, and uh, we're lucky enough to have him here to pick the brain. So, dude, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. My pleasure, truly. Awesome. Today we're actually filming our segment at SPG Athens. Now this is my home gym, this is where I train, this is where our special guest instructor trains, and uh, I think that you guys are really going to enjoy what we've got for you today. Uh, today we're going to be learning a technique from, and you'll be hearing from a little bit beforehand, uh, a close friend of mine for a long time and a training partner. We've helped each other get ready for stuff uh, for longer than I think either of us would care to admit. We've coached together and uh, I know that he's got the goods. He's got some good stuff to show you. Uh, so real quick, just to help people uh, understand uh, uh, who you are and what you bring to the table, what was your introduction to martial arts? Um, well, I started wrestling when I was a very young child. I... Uh, my, my father introduced me to that when I was maybe six. Um, but that was my main martial art. Uh, and I focused on that all the way through till college. And then uh, when I was living in South Carolina with my family, uh, I was out one night um, getting Chinese food. And there was a gym that advertised uh, kickboxing, Muay Thai, uh, Jiu Jitsu, and freestyle wrestling. <laughs> and I turned to my brother and I said, yeah. there's no way there's anyone in that gym uh -huh. that can take me down. Yeah. And so I came back a couple days later and two of the uh, gym members there were training uh -huh. and they were grappling. Yeah. And they were like, hey, would you like to join? And I said, sure. And I was immediately introduced to the arm bar and the triangle. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Because I would pick up and slam these gentlemen. Yeah. Um, because all I knew how to do was wrestle. Mm -hmm. And they would immediately latch onto my neck, latch onto my arm. Yeah. And I could not, for the life of me, stop them from doing it. And so from that point on, I had to, like, I had to figure it out. Had it sucks in. I, I it, yeah, it got yeah. me. I had to figure it out. It 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 got me. That's funny. You know, I think I think that that's a similar experience to a lot of people transitioning into MMA. With I mean, even if you're coming from a jujitsu background, uh, transition to MMA because it takes whatever you already do and then asks, but then what? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It, yeah. Okay, I'm trying to take them down, but then what? Or then I'm what? I'm boxing them and we're getting in and I you know maybe I knock them down, but then what? Yeah. The MMA kind of adds that little piece at the end there. Um, Here's something that I think about often, and I would be very interested to hear what you have to think about it. Uh, what do you think is one thing that people get wrong, the average person, lay person, gets wrong about uh, either fighting or fighters in general? Like, what is something that you're like, oh man, everybody gets that wrong? I would say the importance of, uh, of clinch grappling. I, I would agree with that for sure. I would say the importance of clinch grappling yep. in in not just uh, actual MMA, but in in all of altercations and all yep. physical combat. Like if you have to defend yourself in the street uh, physically, for sure, uh, with someone who has bare hands or even you know a weapon. In, yeah. in a lot of cases, you're going to want to clinch grapple. You don't want to necessarily take it to the ground. Yeah, you want to take that person, get chest to chest, and put their back on a surface. I know Bernard Hawkins has talked about that. He mm -hmm. said he learned how to do infighting, uh, you know, being real close to guys because you never know what they have in their hands. You yep. don't know what's going on. So, yeah, that's a that's that's great. Um, <laughs> I, I think uh, one thing that I think that people get wrong a lot is that they think that it's the toughness aspect that stops most people from continuing or stops most people. And I, I really think that it's discipline more than anything. I've seen more people quit fighting because they have to show up. 
all the time or yep. they, you know, because they need to be restrictive of their diet than because, you know, they had a bad experience or anything like that. That's a, that's a great answer. I think that, I think you're right. I think that's an underappreciated aspect. Uh, how would you describe your fighting style? I know how I would describe it, but, but how would you describe your own fighting style? Ah. Uh, I would probably say that I am I'm probably a classic boxer wrestler. I'd uh, say so. Um, I definitely have diversified my my abilities to a great degree, but uh, I I love to box and I, I I couple that up with my wrestling very nicely. I completely agree. Yeah. I completely agree. I think that you you use both to drag people to uh, exhaustion um, and you know kind of kind of like take somebody who who uh, would be on even terms with you at one point and get them to where. They're not on evil terms anymore. Yeah, um, I, th I do. I think that that's a, a very effective fighting style. I also think that that's something that's hard to. It's hard to learn if you don't have it on the mat. Mm -hmm. Like you, you know, you gotta you gotta ha be subjected to it. Have to have to tough your way through and figure out that it's better. You can be tired on top. You can be tired on bottom. I uh, I feel like people get spoiled, uh, especially when they have punching power. For sure. Um, because then they don't have to box and wrestle for three rounds straight. They don't have to stop shots. They don't have to yep. worry about, you know, fighting out of the clinch or getting put on their back and standing up. Absolutely. And eventually, like, you know, it's, you know, like Bane says in, uh, yeah. in you know, The Dark Knight Rises, uh -huh. you know, success has defeated you. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, 100%. that is very much the truth. And yeah. that's, uh, that's a very dangerous thing with, with uh, athletes. I couldn't agree more. Uh, for, for our last question here, I've actually got a fun one, uh, but I am interested to hear your answer. What U.S. president, historically, would win in a foot race? Ooh. Historically, in a foot race, though. Yes, yes. Mm, that's one I have. I'm assuming level ground, a straight run, maybe 100 meters. Level ground, 100 meters. I'm... I'm gonna pick uh, my man uh, Barack Obama for a foot race. He's built like a runner. Yeah, he's but definitely he, built like a runner. Uh, but he's a smoker too, though. Maybe Bill Clinton. Am are we? Yeah, do, we have a, do we have a time frame on this? <laughs> I, I remember Bill Clinton. I, we're Obama. gonna. Uh, we'll, we'll assume. <laughs> we'll assume like prime prime years. All right, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go with uh, Slick Willie then. <laughs> Slick uh, Willie. I all remember right. him like yeah, running yeah. a lot during his yeah, yeah. Uh, his tenure. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. All right, awesome. Well, dude, uh, thank you. We'll take a look. Stick around to the end here. We're going to see a uh, really slick submission. If it is what I think it is, it's something that uh, I've, I've tapped to more times than I'd care to admit. <laughs> cool. Uh, so I'm going to be showing my arm triangle from bottom half guard. It's kind of an unexpected one, but it works very efficiently. All right, so I'm going to find my underhook in here. And instead of trying to wrestle for the takedown, I'm going to shoot my half guard. Boom. Right there. All right. Now, generally, once you pull half guard, people are going to sit and turn away and try and stuff your underhook. Boom. All right. This is a very, very common reaction. This is how I developed this move. All right. So now I'm going to do two things. I'm going to drape my arm over his shoulder close to where his neck is and put my hand on his back. And then I'm going to take my half guard and I'm going to find my lockdown right here. Boom. All right. Now I'm going to make my big movement pulling him flat right here. Now, as I extend on my legs, I'm going to boom, lock up. And now my squeeze is just me flexing my bicep. Boom, and I have my tap.